Glory to God. Are you already tired? Let's stand together to say thank you to, the, to God. Who has this hope that when the saints go march in, I want to be among them. And who thinks that by his grace it will be part of them? This is uh, good. Uh, praise be to God. The chariot will no more be like the one of Elijah. I think it is something that the Lord is uh, designing in us. Praise be to God. Let's thank God for the chariot that will come. Our Father and our God, uh, at the time of Elijah, he was expecting something specific. The chariot came and he went up. We too something of this kind oh our God will come we will be taken in glory we want in the meantime while expecting it everything required that has to do with our preparation we want it to be obvious in our lives Lord we are expecting with a full uh, uh, confidence uh, that uh, you could uh, put everything in place that the day that day won't be a day of sorrow and lamentations for us but a day of joy rather in the name of Jesus Christ once more bless us bless the reading of your scriptures by Jesus Christ our Lord we ask it Amen brother Alicia is going to pray once more to ask God to bless the word we're going to read we are very uh, lagging behind we forgot to time we'll see again what we're going to do because we are still in this body the body is limited one day we'll have an unlimited dimension and that day we will really uh, do things we are being tired uh, brother Richard pray for us beloved uh, heavenly father it is with uh, thanksgiving that we are coming uh, in before your mercy seat uh, to praise you worship you lift up your names uh, exhort you because uh, you are the only god who is worthy of praise lord uh, you led us uh, in this place to worship you and uh, uh, worship you through the service that we want you to bless uh, from the beginning to the end you are present because you are the one who convened uh, this gathering and you have never gathered your people without uh, uh, without saying anything to him uh, and let it go with, like this uh, this is why we put these moments in your hand bless this moment whereby you want to talk to us this moment where we really need to hear your voice Oh Lord, from the mouth of your servant, may your word alone stem out of your mouth so that this word may comfort us and strengthen us and correct us. May this word size us and may this word wound us, but we want to be ready that day to be raptured and be with you. Lord, it is for our sake and good that you have gathered us. We are expecting you act in a powerful fashion and accomplish your perfect will in each one of us because this is the day you have made for us to you be glory honor and praise in the name of jesus christ may your anointing be on your servant anoint his lips O oh lord and circumcise our ears for the glory of your name we ask it in the name of jesus christ our lord and savior amen amen, amen. Uh, get seated please I want to greet all those who are online once more, and I want to greet uh, each one of us. It's uh, 12 to noon. Uh, we don't have uh, enough time. We will try to move forward a little bit. Let's hope, uh, God willing, next week uh, we can 
wrap up. Uh, I think some events uh, uh, happened last week. We started uh, around 11.30, and it was uh, not far from noon, so we were led to read a few scriptures, and today it was required, because everything which is being done in the house of God is being done in all transparency, and it should leave everyone free in his heart, in his steps of participation in everything that is the kingdom. The Bible says that those who are rejoicing, we should rejoice with them. Those who are in pain, we should also weep with them. So if there is a situation, if it is not clarified, we cannot take any position to rejoice or to weep. So it was uh, necessary, it took time, but it was good enough. And God wanted it to be done today because it was necessary to have those uh, clarity in place uh, together at the same time. Everything works together for the good of those who love God and those who are called uh, according to the purpose of the Lord. You remember the other day, we, uh, for a few weeks, we tried to come back to what Apostle Peter told us. He said he was writing uh, in second picture, chapter 1, for those who were not here. I'm going to try to give the background. He said, uh, Simon Peter, Apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who received a faith of the same price. He said, uh, a faith of the same price, the same precious faith, uh, like the one of uh, the apostles of the Lord. So we try to uh, move forward to know the nature of such faith uh, and the implication of such good, such uh, uh, true faith. And uh, in the meantime, last Sunday, we went uh, rapidly to see a witness of that faith. It was uh, about Enoch, one of those uh, who manifested the true faith in, that, in his time. Uh, Enoch w marched uh, with uh, God uh, by ob ob uh, obeying, uh, like we sang, uh, uh, believe and obey, because the uh, uh, word is... Uh, shedding light in us because the word is a light to uh, enlighten us on the pathway and then it will allow us to be filled with the glory of God and then what God wants is what we too want and with uh, the power of his name we can everything God wants amen so we saw Enoch marched with God marching with God is obeying to his word because he who loves God two people cannot work together unless they agree and the agreement is upon his word nobody can uh, agree with God God doesn't agree with anybody because he can preach or because he is holding a position God as we heard it yesterday when brother Isaac uh, pre preached uh, God is with the one who is with him and he forsakes the one who refuses to march with him uh, by his word. He also forsakes him. So we understood that Enoch, after his birth, he had a march with God for 300 years. He was marching with God. He said, after the birth of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years uh, and he gave birth to sons and daughters. It is also said how it was done precisely. And for 300 years, this man of God walked every day, going from progress to progress, light after light, and each time he is enlightened, he takes into account the word of God and his life is liberated like we uh, sang it. If my life is liberated, uh, the liberation doesn't come by a uh, liberation war, but it intervenes by the fact that you let the word of God take, uh, uh, take up on our old uh, being because uh, if this nature of old man is still dominating you cannot have victory praise be to God Enoch walked with God he walked with the word of God and one day he was not found on the earth anymore but Enoch, well, Enoch was not numerous 
Brother Jamal, Brother Elisha, Enoch, do we have, uh, uh, how many uh, people do we have in his congregation? He was alone. I don't know if his house believed for a period of time and they uh, lagged behind, but he was the only believer, true believer of his hour who marched with God. So this is a business between you and God. It is not about a group business. This is not a togetherness group. It is individually that we are called. And now, because each one comes to the venue of the convening, he said, oh, you have been called. You too. Are here. He said, the master called me to come in this place. Me too. I was called. I too. I was called. And together, what do we become? We become a congregation. The true congregation of the firstborn. This is it. It's not the gathering of many men, even though this is not so bad. Uh, the, on, 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 on the day of Pentecost, there were uh, 3,000, more than 3,000. is not bad uh, to be numerous. If many can come in the kingdom of God, it's uh, quite good because God wants... Give me some water, please. God doesn't want anyone to perish, even a single one to perish. So if all can be saved, this is what God wants. And then uh, very soon, this will not happen anymore. Let me uh, take advantage of the glass of the brother. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. He said the brother has not even started his voice is living my voice will come back <coughs> glory to God take courage Enoch was translated you and I we are expecting rapture but before rapture there is something which is uh, crucial or which is key which has to do Weave the calling. God did not call you to gather you in this manner only, but he has called you to prepare us. And this is why he sent the prophet, our beloved brother Branham, with the word of God for our preparation. The message is to return to the teaching revealed of our fathers, the apostles, which is in complete agreement with everything Jesus said while he was on the earth. The apostles never went away a single moment from what the master said. They followed the instruction uh, to the hand and by the grace of God this led to an outcome already on the earth before rapture. And Enoch had an outcome on the earth before his uh, translation. I don't know if you are following. Enoch received what we call the testimony. The testimony that he was pleasing God. Amen. Because the testimony that we are a good brother, the brethren can render it and it's a good thing when a brother does not have a good, a bad testimony in his house, in his neighborhood and around his people. But this testimony can be a fake testimony because a man may not see all the aspects of life, the life of a brother. And a, bro a man can know the past of a brother until now and he can think that uh, he has all the testimony. But in the meantime, from yesterday to now, the brother has changed. So you can see how much it is dangerous to confide yourself into the testimony of men. Somebody may be good until yesterday and today things change in a negative fashion also. While the testimony of God is never mistaken. Hallelujah. The issues may come up in the life of, in the life of a brother 
but does not uh, take anything of the testimony of God because he knows now, tomorrow, and after God does not make a mistake in his testimony. Enoch, our brother, received a testimony which was not the one of man. Let us read, let us uh, uh, go farther and will be false to stop so that we may continue next week, uh, God willing. And then uh, we will have the live broadcast and then we'll continue. Let's stand. And we will prolong it with the testimony of Enoch. We are here. What is the goal? Is for rapture. The message given is for the preparation of the bride church. The prophet left uh, brother frank was given so that we may be kept uh, in the balance with the true food uh, which has not been spoiled by the interpretation of those who are modern teachers in the message god bless us let's read in act chapter 15 act chapter 15 verse 7 And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. They may have faith, a faith would be raised in them. And God, which knoweth the heart, bear them witness. Is it okay? God bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them. Why? Purifying their hearts by faith. Glory to God. Purifying their hearts by faith, he bear them witness. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Our brother has prayed, Lord, once more, we give our hearts into your hands because we will not have a long time of uh, teaching and sermon but the few minutes that we're going to spend here may they serve each one of us for the rest of the time and with uh, what go along with what is remaining what you will give us through brother frank and other servants of god we may finally one day be able to finish our preparation thank you bless us lord because we want to be raptured like enoch was we want to be raptured like elijah was we want to go to you nothing good is attracting us on this earth anymore but there are requirements there are another there is a matter to be raptured please shed light into us once more today in the name of jesus christ amen please get seated you know what Peter said here in uh, chapter 1? Uh, second picture. Se second pi picture, chapter 1, when you talk about the faith he shared with those who believe today, uh, to whom he was writing. He said, His divine power has given us everything that contributes to life and godliness. Is uh, divine power. It's not. It doesn't. It, it has nothing to do with the enthusiasm of a, a sermon. There is something different. It's divine power. In Cornelius' house, what we read, uh, there is something that happened. Something key happened, uh, and uh, we needed the word uh, in the first place. And uh, God sent his angel to tell Cornelius, go and send in uh, uh, Jopi uh, at the seashore. There is uh, somebody called uh, Simon who uh, has accommodated a man of God uh, who is called Simon and uh, nicknamed Peter. 
when it comes, uh, it will tell you things uh, by which uh, you can be saved. Uh, take Act uh, chapter 11 for those who are taking notes uh, from chapter 13. This man uh, told us how he saw in his house the angel introducing himself to him and saying, send somebody to Jopi and uh, call on Simon called Peter, who will tell you things by which you will be saved, you and your house. You see, the Lord in his prayer, he was already saying in John 17, let go in John 17 and come back, John 17, verse 20, I believe. John 17, let's take from verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. An apostle is somebody who is sent. Why? And for verse 6, I certify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Follow word. Never pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through the word. Hallelujah. So Peter says, uh, God says uh, uh, to Cornelius, make Peter, nickname Peter, uh, make Simon, nickname Peter to come. To who will give you words? Because what will be said is not the thought of Peter that will be communicated, but it's the thought of God, the word of God that is going to communicate by the Holy Ghost. He will tell you things. And Paul could say, I did not come to you with uh, a superiority of uh, language, neither with the, uh, human wisdom, neither any other thing, but I have come with the power of God, uh, which is manifested and which is shown forth. And this is how the power, the, the power of God is found in the word of God in the first place. Peter went, the spirit was there, but the spirit was acting so that the word of God could be presented first. Do you follow me, brethren? Peter went, uh, uh, being the bearer of the message of the hour, the true message that is master transmitted to them. And the Lord prayed for the apostles, he prayed for the first disciples, and he said, I don't pray for the sick alone, but I pray for those who will hear the true word by the teaching of the true apostles. I can't hear you, brethren. This is an obligation because, brethren, when God sends a man, the person does not say his own words, but he says the word of God. And when it is the word of God which is said, God stands in his word and God confirms his word and God renders testimony of his word or he bears witness to his word. Hallelujah. Remember, when the word was made flesh during the baptism, God himself from heaven above bear witness, saying, this one is my, be, is my beloved son in whom I put my affection. It's not the pastor, it's not the man of God. It's already good when a man of God bears witness for something. But the, the testimony, the Lord could say, my testimony doesn't come from, from, from men alone. My father who sent me uh, uh, bears witness of me and his uh, w uh, testimony is true. So uh, Peter received the command, the commandment, uh, while... Uh, uh, Cornelius uh, sent uh, to call on Peter who was sent uh, by the Lord like we read it in John uh, 17, uh, 18, 19 uh, Cornelius was the subject of the prayer of the Lord because the Lord said I'm not praying for those who are here alone but for those who will believe when they preach my word when they speak on my behalf those who will believe I already pray for them so that they same things may be granted unto them. Amen. Amen. And when you see Peter, the day of Pentecost, 
uh, starting speaking for the first uh, Christians where he should speak uh, from uh, of, uh, on behalf of God he said in chapter 2 let us come back uh, once more you see I'm not a, a, a real uh, preacher it's not, I'm not somebody who can really uh, align things like uh, the others know how to do it you know each one uh, has his own position I don't want to do like uh, brother Badi I don't want to act like brother Isaac brother Richard I never heard him preaching but I know he has his own style but it's the same Holy Ghost which operates logically. So here you can see Peter, the day of Pentecost, he is going to speak. Uh, towards the hand, he says, Repent ye and each one be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Each one, if I ask you, did you repent? Yes, I repented. Were you baptized? Uh, but you don't stop there. The message of Peter uh, that he was uh, bearing from, on behalf of the Lord, he said, repent ye, each one be baptized on, in the name of Je the Lord Jesus Christ too, and you will receive as a gift of God the Holy Ghost. Did you hear me? He said, it, this is not where he stops. He said, this promise is for your children he said for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord God shall come what did God want to do in Cornelius house brethren it's uh, you know a participatory meeting what is was God aiming at in uh, Cornelius house God wanted he wanted to continue the work he started in Jerusalem isn't it he said you will we shall receive power a power coming uh, on you the holy ghost and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem in judy and in samaria and uh, even in at the in the hands of the earth so it means we gentiles whatever numerous we have and afar off the same gospel will generate the same impact it will give the same faith and a faith which is as precious as the one of Peter, a faith to which God will bear witness. Is it okay with you, brethren? This is why in the meantime we said, let's examine ourselves. To 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, we should examine, we should know, you should question yourselves. Don't wait for the day, the day of the final examination is now. It's now that you should check the faith that you have. You, how did you receive it? What is the word which has uh, moved you to say that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it uh, a social gospel? Come in our congregation. If you have issues, you will be assisted. If you want to be married, people will be surrounding you. If this is it, if this is the reason why you were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you never understood anything. And the Lord has nothing to do. God has nothing to vindicate. But if the word that stemmed out the word of Peter the day of Pentecost, the word that stemmed out the mouth of Paul, the, mouth, the word that stemmed out of those who were sent by God, if what Brother Branham preached, if what Brother Fran continues preaching, if this is what you heard by the mouth of a man who received himself this word, then, brethren, there is something that is going to happen. So when we go back in Acts 11, thank you very much, dear brother. Thank you. It fell and I never noticed it. Act 15. No, Act 11. Rather, this is where we were. Act 11. He will tell you things. Things uh, by which you will be saved. Uh, you and your whole house and he said when i started speaking it means when i started speaking the word of god when i opened my mouth and god could speak through me and find hearts that are disposed hallelujah something happens then the holy ghost uh, came upon them as as at the beginning 
And I remember, I then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John ended baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift, the same gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, who, who believed uh, to the Lord? It means who, who had faith. Uh, who have been given faith from the beginning. Go, uh, faith comes from what you hear and uh, from what you hear from the word of Christ. We heard Christ speaking to us. Peter, you remember, Peter was a fisherman. Re uh, sorry, he was a fisherman. Peter was a fisherman. He went uh, at the uh, water shores. He uh, fished for night. He didn't get anything. And finally, the miracle was performed. The Lord came at the water uh, bench. And then, uh, based uh, on uh, the uh, issue of failure of Peter, Peter received the revelation of the Lord to him to make him know that he is not in the presence of a simple preacher, but of the one who can speak. And what does not exist is created. But how in a sea where there is no water, where experienced fishermen spend all the night, how is it that a man can come without being somebody who is a seaman, uh, usually can now give a commandment? Because Peter says that we have labored all night without catching anything. But based upon your commandment, because uh, you are commanding, I uh, will obey. The, uh, will obey the man of God sang it. When God speaks, sorry, sorry, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, getting old, but it's an allergia that I'm manifesting. God bless you. When God speaks, it creates something. Uh, Peter understands that overnight, the fish they didn't get anything, but the Lord was not there. In the morning, the Lord comes and he asks him to uh, render a service. He rendered a service without memory. Rather, render a service without memory. Because God cannot remain in a place where you murmur. He does not uh, sit in the murmur of his people, but in the presence of his people. I don't know if Peter was singing, but at least he was happy in the presence of God. Uh, he, he finished the work and God tells him the God manifested in flesh because the Bible says in Isaiah 7 verse 14 when the virgin will be with child and give birth to a child what name will we give him Emmanuel God with us he, uh, we, Peter did not have the revelation yet but he understands that this man he speaks like nobody spoke before him he listens, he listens because he was closer. He was among uh, those who were uh, sticking. Uh, he was uh, in the uh, boat. Uh, and the, when the Lord finished speaking, he said, it's not possible. What is going on? What is this manner of preaching today? And the Lord did not finish. He said, uh, did, you didn't catch anything. Get in deep water, water now and cast thy net. Cast thy net. Because the order of the Lord should be given first to know if you believe or you don't believe. If God doesn't speak, there is no faith. But when God speaks, then you will know the nature you have. Brothers, it's not about coming and sit down here, but it's about knowing. If in the examination of your life, the word of God is making your heart move, is the word of God finding a position in your heart? Because when you believe the word of God is a sure anchor for your soul. When Peter heard it, he said, I don't know yet who he is pretty much, but whatever he says, I'm going to obey. And he started obeying and he redeployed his net. The net of great fishermen has nothing to do with the small fish uh, net, fish net that we have. It's a bunch of work that should be accomplished, but it is an obedient work. And uh, he started deploying his net. And he started uh, gathering the net. He saw that big fishes are jumping in the net. It's not possible. And when Peter saw this, uh, his heart was 
moving and he has he wanted to rush and get out of the water when he got out of the water he was not interested by the traders or fish he went to fall at the feet of the lord and he said lord go away from me why is he calling this unknown man lord when god speaks and you are ready to go forward a little bit to understand the lord will reveal himself to you and when the lord reveals himself this is now when true faith starts he will raise faith and when he raises faith in you brethren be ascertained that he will complete it he is going to perfect it because he is not a man to be stopped by the circumstances of life he is god when he starts even though you have issues on the way he's going to complete them he's going to complete it he is able to widen and strengthen your faith he is the one who has the power he speaks and what doesn't exist will come into existence he speaks and what is weak is strengthened he speaks and what is bowed is uh, getting straight for straight and uh, he speaks and uh, everything that fell uh, will stand uh, micah said don't rejoice satan because if i fell the way you see me i'm going to stand pretty soon by the grace of my master who is able i'm going to stand upright and if i am sitting in darkness the lord shall be my light he will come to me and shed light in me and say stand upright so that christ may enlighten you may god be praised may god be praised he fell at the feet of the master started saying lord sorry sorry lord withdraw from me withdraw from me because i'm a sinful man and this is the very reason why he came he told the pharisees i did not come to call the righteous to repentance but sinners peter don't complain don't be worried i didn't come for you to be lost like isaiah we read it isaiah said oh lord i am dead i am in the midst of sinners and myself i'm a sinful man and my eyes have seen the lord i'm dead he said no we it's for the sake of purifying you i appeared unto you to send you but before you send somebody it should be a witness of what is going on over there and he sees uh, heaven he sees the seraphims he see the glorious thing and the lord says now who shall i send his uh, lips have been purified something has happened hallelujah something coming from above do you follow brethren it's not something that was taken on the earth but from above the relief or assistance doesn't come from elsewhere but from there so peter also experience the encounter with the lord and later on the lord uh, peter is sent by the lord the day of pentecost peter who was trembling and shaking in front of a woman peter who was shaking in front of men who denied his master not because he did not know it was the master but because he did not have the power he did not have the power to resist amen and this peter wrote his divine power amen hallelujah has given unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness how is it possible for a man to work in this life from faith to virtue add to virtue to patience patience uh, to 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 uh, knowledge to knowledge uh, to, uh, to patience patience and to patience patience is also called uh, persistence and to persistence you should add godliness to godliness brotherly god to brotherly god divine love how is it possible to, for somebody to grow like this is is divine power which gives to the christian what contributes to the victorious christian life and godliness this is why 
the, when Apostle Peter came up in Cornelius' house, sent by God with the word of God, he said, when I started speaking, the Holy Ghost, the power coming upon us, the day of Pentecost, came upon them as it happens to us. You don't follow? You are not following? God bless you. So let's go back to our verse. Chapter 15 is uh, now uh, explaining when there was a great discussion. Uh, Peter came back to those events because these are key events on which we cannot argue. He said, And God, and God who knows the heart when the pagans are heard the word and gospel by my mouth, God who knows the hearts of those who are listening, bear witness to them by himself. By giving them what? The Holy Ghost. Please stand. All of us, let's stand. Tell your neighbor, stand. To your neighbor, if it's a lady and she's sleeping, tell her, stand. Brother Matthias is going to wrap up very soon. We'll be forced to cut it short and come back later on it. And God, and God who knows the hearts, and God who knows my heart, repeat, and God who knows hearts, if he knows heart, he knows my heart too. That's what I mean. Bear them witness. And I am not quoting the uh, scriptures. I want him to bear witness to me too. Giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. As he did unto us from the beginning. And I want him to bear witness to him by giving me the Holy Ghost as with the apostles in the beginning. What kind of Sunday school is that? This is Sunday and it's all about a school. Brethren, time has come. We are not talking about I'm from the message, I'm from the message. We said the chariot will come. The chariot will not be a chariot of, of fire. I don't know the way it will be, but I'm sure it will be mine. Enoch received the testimony. And when he received the testimony, it was translated later on. We never talked about a chariot for him, but for Elijah, there was a chariot. But for me, when I look at it, I know time has come. Because it is written in First John chapter 5. Please remain standing because I've been standing for such a long time. Let us uh, stand for us to close. In chapter 5, verse 9, if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater because the testimony of God consists in the fact that he bear witness to his child. He who believe in the Son of God has this testimony in himself. Are we agreeing? Do we understand? In Cornelius' house, they received this testimony. Uh, at the Pentecost, they received the same uh, testimony. And here, John, uh, linking it to it, he said, He who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in himself. And he said, The Spirit bears witness to our spirit. This is Paul saying it. The, the Spirit bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God. We are not uh, born of God by becoming members of a church, but by uh, being born by the action of the Spirit and the Word. This afternoon, I'm going to stop here. Counting on the grace of God to start from here and close. If we receive the witnesses of men, the testimony, the, if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater because the uh, testimony of God consists. 
So if we see the witness of men, the witness of God is greater for this witness of God is uh, in, uh, in the house of Cornelius. So when uh, they receive the gospel, God says, and God who knows the heart, bear witness to them. Bear them witness by giving them what? Because if it will remain like that, we say, if uh, he said, uh, uh, bear witness, he said, God spoke again, this one is my son once more. He said, by giving them the Holy Ghost. So the witness, the testimony of God is the Holy Ghost in you that can show that God is bear, bearing witness that you belong to him. Brethren, the mark of God is this. This is where you make the difference. This is where you have a demarcation of things. You can feel the whole church, but if you don't have the, the testimony of God, you are not ready to be taken. God cannot... Uh, judge unfairly because uh, he bear witness to the faith of uh, Enoch in the same manner he will bear witness to the faith of the believer of the hand time before taking it who, taking him who believes it who wants this who wants God to allow that his faith would not be a faith which is wavering here and there brethren be a Preacher doesn't mean anything if he did not receive the testimony. It's dangerous because you're going to lose yourself and you're going to uh, make sure the others go astray. May God be praised. Let us ask the Lord, remember me. Remember me because I want to have this testimony in me. The uh, testimony of brother Isaac is brother Isaac's testimony. Brother Elisha's testimony is his own testimony which God bear witness to him. It's not because he bear witness to brother Elisha that he bear witness to his wife. No, God knows each heart. And the only thing which allows the heart to be purified of the uh, filth of this world, what is it? He gave them what? He purified their heart in the first place by faith. The word comes and it sanctifies, it separates, it splits. You know, there is justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But in one single day, God accomplished this in Cornelius' house. He justified them by sending his word towards him. It's a manner to show that I have distinguished him, I've selected him, I'm going to take care of him even if he's a Gentile. Peter, don't qualify this man because I know he's a Gentile, but I have declared him pure. I have justified him. But if God has justified us, who is going to accuse us? Who is going to accuse the man God has selected in the protocol? It is said, I am going to be with uh, this man, the head of the protocol, should accept. The Lord has accepted. The Lord said, uh, it's not possible. I cannot eat any filthy thing. What God declares pure, don't declare it filthy. Peter, I'm, I understand it. I'm not negotiating with you. I'm sending you. Hallelujah. He said, come down. Come down. The men are waiting for you. Follow them without hesitating. Hallelujah. Oh, God needs people who are anointed with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, and who go without hesitating. Oh, they go without stopping until the head of the road takes six people with him. Jews, they started going one day walk. They got to Caesarea and Peter arrived there and he was astounded to see a Greek congregation expecting him. At what moment the word which stemmed out of the mouth of God created a trust position. He gathered all those who wanted to see safe. Reverend, if the word touched your heart and you believe that there is salvation in this word, gather those who belong to you. Tell them what God told you. He gathered them. He didn't know how to speak, but he said the man of God will come. He's going to speak. Be ready. This is a good pastor. He said, be ready. I'm not a pastor, but I gather you. The one who is going to come and speak to you is on the way. And I'm sure the angel told me when he comes to speak, the thing that he's going to tell you will allow me and those who listen with me to be saved. If you want to be saved, come. 
rush and come. Peter is coming there, had a whole day to govern everybody. How long did this uh, uh, walk last? I don't remember, but they had sufficient time to gather all these people one day to go. One day they s s slept there and on the other day they resumed and they came at a certain moment so the time to call the brothers the sisters uh, in the surrounded come and they gathered and peter went there they bowed uh, they said no if you are a servant of god don't accept honor because honor belongs to god idolatry in this message should stop at the time of Brother Branham, idolatry started when he was living. At the time of Brother Frank, idolatry started. It should stop. We cannot be, uh, we cannot take this brother as an idol. He's a wonderful, wise, and prudent uh, servant. We should be wise and prudent servant like him. But let us not start being idolaters. Brother Frank is our beloved brother. He's a uh, uh, servant commissioned for the balance of the children of God but please let us not go beyond this he said leave my name alone don't take my name to start building your own kingdom it's not because you are around brother Frank that you are sent by God no if uh, I have the possibility to be in the surrounding of Brother Frank, uh, I will be. It's because I don't have the opportunity and the means to be there all the time. I have not been there yet because I don't have the means. If I have the means, even if it's once uh, a month, I will go to Crefe because I believe in this ministry. I believe in this ministry. Brother Isaac believes this ministry. Brother Badi believes this ministry. We believe this ministry in this house of God. We are with the same agreement that this man is the one who was commissioned so that we can be kept in balance all the apostolic uh, uh, things uh, all the uh, parallel messages uh, that are coming here and there we don't believe in them we believe in the divine commission but we don't believe in idolatry brethren say amen don't be afraid they went and they uh, bow down. Uh, holy Peter. They said, no, stand upright. Brother Frank is saying, doing the same thing. Brother Frank doesn't want followers. He wants you to believe the word of God. And if you believe the word of God, you will be united with Brother Frank uh, in rapture. But if you are Frankist, uh, you are lost. But if you are Christian, uh, you are saved. Because uh, Brother Frank has never been a Branhamista, I will never be a Frankist. I will be a Christian. He did not come to lead us to him. He always said he came to lead us to Christ. Brethren, get out of the religious mess and come back to the apostolic faith. Brother Frank will be rejoicing in this regard. He will see that his labor was not in vain. Stand up, uh, Brother Cornelius. I am a man just like you. I have been sent and they started chatting like a brother chats with his own brother, uh, brotherly fellowship. Uh, hallelujah. And Peter saw. He said, ah, oh, it's different. Uh, Peter stopped the Cornelius, sit down. And when he started speaking, he unveiled the plan of salvation, redemption, our God fulfilled what he promised from Genesis 3, verse 15. The woman will have a seed, and the serpent will have its seed, but the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpents and in the development the late the woman the, the virgin woman will be with child she will give birth to a son will give him the name of Emmanuel this is when God will give the sign that is among men this God uh, in uh, Isaiah he said it will be wonderful a son who was given unto us but government will be on the shoulder we call you wonderful uh, counselor uh, eternal god prince of peace he is the only one peter came to announce this 
very one. And one they started listening and that they saw that Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures and he rose again according to the scripture. He went in heaven according to the scripture. He sent to the promised Holy Ghost according to the and we receive it according to the scripture. And the one who believes really in Jesus Christ's sacrifice should repent from his sins because whoever believes in him receive through his name forgiveness of his sins. And all the prophets uh, bear witness uh, of him, uh, Act 10, 43. Whoever believes in him receives through his name forgiveness of his sin. When he got there, oh la la, they were connected with Christ. They understood that Redeemer is Christ. It is not a human being. You can sit down if you are tired. If you are not tired, those who are strong. Sit, uh, get a uh, stand. Those who are tired, you can sit. God even understand all this. So it's normal. God bless you. And Peter, when he finished speaking, the hearts uh, of those men were opened up to what? To the word. They understood how the sins, how the hearts, how the hearts can be purified and the sins forgiven. So when they're in their hearts, there was a amen. What are you saying, Peter? All the prophets from Moses in Genesis, what he said until Malachi, until John the Baptist, hallelujah, they bear witness of him that whosoever, whatever the pastor of that person, Mary the Magdalene, was Mary of Magdalene was not a good woman, she was a harlot, but she believed in his name. She received him. She said, Who do you call him? Jesus, according to the angel, they say is it's him who will save his people from their sins. She said, Okay, I have no more issues, I have no community because I'm very bad, I'm evil, but I will have a community. Jesus is my community, and she ran, she ran, she bowed down on her knees and she said. Lord, she spoke a language that she alone and God could understand because she could not speak. She did not have the right to speak. Jesus said, you judged and sentenced this woman, but I declare unto you that uh, numerous sins are forgiven to her. You have sentenced her because you are ignorant. You have sentenced her because you judge without having the file. You did not even investigate the file and you cannot even investigate the file because you have partial knowledge of the file. The righteous judge is the investigator and is the decision maker. He said, I declare that her numerous sins are forgiven to her. And he turns towards the woman and says, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. While peace cannot come upon on sh- if the chastisement doesn't come on him, chastisement which gives us peace with God and with others, he has fallen on upon Christ. She believed that. Close. Case close. Zacharias. Look at poor Zacharias. He loved money so much, but that day money was not important for him. That great man getting and jumping and climbing on a tree myself if uh, even if i am i'm not a, a great man and uh, i cannot climb a tree if it's not if i'm not in a hot situation but he was in a hot situation because the salvation of your soul is the most important thing he knew that in jesus you have salvation simon said simon said my eyes have seen salvation simeon said it Death is not something that is uh, fearful to me because my my eyes have seen salvation. And you see Zechariah, an old man who was uh, uh, jumping, he said, a powerful savior has been raised in our midst. By him we are delivered of our foes and those who hate us. And God allows us to serve him from now on without fear in holiness and righteousness. Is divine power. The Spirit of God was already working in Zechariah. In Zacharias. He was not fed with wine. It was new wine. The elderly 
could no more hold it in his shoes. He was troubled. He said, a powerful savior has come in David's house and the cows could recognize this is him. And when the Lord said, come down because I should go to your house. Imagine the joy of a sinner towards whom salvation is going. He was happy. He was happy. He was happy and people were judging him. He said, look at this filthy man. Yesterday he crooked me. The day before yesterday he crooked me. But today he's not a crook anymore. Amen. If you remain in the members of his uh, crooking, you will go to hell. He has found back his savior. And he said, all those that have crooked come to me. The money is still in here. I am going to share your money in your, among you and I will multiply. Let's suppose that you made a placement with me. I will give you four times what I took from you. The half, I will give it to the poor. Why? Because he found in Jesus Christ the true richness, the true wealth. Today, I invite you, brethren, don't continue like in the house of Cornelius. God is able to purify your heart by the word which is all creating. He has the power to separate light from darkness and to make you go to salvation. To be saved. You who are today still ruined by sins, you can be freed by this leper. Uh, like in Matthew, he went, he said, Lord, he fell on his knees. He said, Lord, if you will, if you will, at this moment, you can make me pure. When he when he says pure, I understand. But when he said, you can make me clean, clean, I tell you publicly, my father, my own father was a leper. He was completely cut by leprosy. His feet were cut. His hands were cut. And leprosy will completely change your face. But God can redeem the members that have been cut and make you clean once again. And when you, I see, for me, I see a man who is a lame man who is completely distorted by leprosy. And he said, you can make me pure. You can make me clean. And the Lord says, I want it. The Lord did not pray. He said, I want it. I will be clean. Who wants God to speak? Who believe that if God speaks, it's going to change? Who trusts God? Who knows that God can what he says? And who believes that what God wants, I can also. In his name, we're going to read to wrap up. Psalm 34, a verse that I pretty much love. And each one will manifest his faith and will continue if God wants it. Verse 8. Verse 33, verse 8. 33, verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. May God bless all of us. Who wants God to speak? Who wants God to speak to his heart? Who wants God to remove filthiness, the things that will hinder the Spirit of God to come and dwell in us? Who wants God to speak to him, both in secret or here? But if you want God to speak to you, God has spoken secretly to Cornelius, but it became public, and the evidence and the testimony came from heaven to tell everybody that from now on, the faith of this pagan man is as precious as the faith of Peter. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Isn't it wonderful? He says and it takes place. He commands and things come to existence. Let's pray the Lord.